Hi. I look like I just woke up, but I've been up already a lot. I had a class this morning. Um, but I have a long way to go, so I figured I ought to talk while I'm walking. So today's video, as far as I know, is on ego highs and synchronicities. Two separate topics. I don't know how they're going to come together. But, um, hey. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I think the over arching, arc, arcing, overarching, overarching, overarching <laughs> subject is, um, something about surrender. So, um, first I'll tell you guys this, this amazing synchronicity that, um, had me crying this morning. I just, just I was like, forget it. I'm not even going to put eye makeup on. I haven't been crying like a lot lately at all. I've been, I'm so much happier about everything. All the, the storm has passed. I hope you guys got a lot of healing from the storms that I have been in. Oh, I love my little trail here. My little pathway. Um, but so the other night, as you guys know, if you, if you follow any of the videos or if you saw the video from a couple days ago, I did the weirdest thing is, you know, one of my friends on Facebook said something about a lovely day is going to happen from here on out. And um, my friend Todd, I love him. He's like one of my, my younger brother's best friends. And he's like a brother to me, brother from another mother. Yeah. Like he's in my, he must be in my soul family. Because he gets it. He, he, sends, he sends me posts in our instant messages or whatever it's called on Facebook. Um, that totally resonate with with how I think and operate. But anyway, he had this post and I just happened to see it that night about the lovely day that's going to, he was just talking about in general, a lovely day is going to happen. And then I danced that night to the Bill Weathers song because I was so happy to hear it. Like it permeated my whole being. And I don't know, I just follow my inspiration and the iPad was sitting there. So I picked it up and I was like, oh, I can record and play the music because I never can play music because I'm recording on this, my phone. And so um, I did that, which was so odd for me. Like I'm not quite, I mean, I love teaching, but I'm, I'm not the exhibitionist of like, let's just have everything that I'm more close off about. Anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. I just am committed to following my heart and my soul and my soul's calling. And I think this is part of what this channel is about is yes, I am a psychologist and yes, I have lots of deep information, you know, that's come through my third eye, that's come through um, um, nine years of college and graduate school and 20 years of working as a psychologist. More than that, because I got my master's earlier than that. So I was working as a therapist before that. So I have lots of information to give because I, I want people not to be stuck. Um, but beyond that, beyond that, and all of the teaching I've learned, because I've learned a lot of spiritual teaching as well. I've studied that at the same time as psychology simultaneously. Let's see which way. I think I'm going to go right. I have good news. I don't know if I had to share it yet, but basically it's like I'm coming from my old house and walking on this trail today for the first time to my new house. Like, uh, I know that it's very small, but I'm just really, really happy. Um, I'll, maybe I'll talk about it some other time, but I, I don't live there yet. I'm just, hopefully everything goes through and I can, I can move to this, but it's connected to the trails. It's so weird. Everything is so synchronistic. And so what I was going to tell you about what I was crying about, um, not, not sadness in my life. It's just sadness because one second, there's a bike coming, but my friend passed over and, um, And um, people just think I'm FaceTime talking to someone because everyone's doing that at this time. 
So I dance to the lovely day, a Bill Withers song. And I might take it down because it's copyright, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't mean to do it. It was just following my inspiration. And, um, but I went to my friend Jeffrey's page because my friend Jeffrey and I share a birthday. Like his is one day before mine. So we're always talking to each other in February and um, giving each other love and remembering things from junior high and, and stuff. And um, he passed over, I think he had a stroke. And it might have been, okay, so I went to his Facebook page and one of his last posts was rest in peace, Bill Withers. And Bill is this, the singer who sang the song, Lovely Day, the one that I was dancing to. So it's like last night I was crying because, and this morning, well, this morning I had a vision because I wanted to, you know, God rest his soul and like perpetual shine on Jeffrey and, and heaven. And um, that's, that's a different story. But uh, I went to his Facebook page and he had, one of his last posts was rest in peace, Bill Withers. I didn't know Bill Withers. I didn't even know the name of the guy that sang Lovely Day until I wrote it in my description, my YouTube um, video on the video that I did so you know give credit to the person singing the song I was so enjoying dancing to so anyway um, one of Jeffrey's last posts was rest in peace to this man and so so weird that I was like like dancing to a song by this guy who just died like a month ago and I didn't know he died um, and my friend Jeffrey had just put a post about him I think I'm going to sit in the shade somewhere. It's like almost 90 degrees here today. And um, I want to concentrate so that you guys get not just good information, but this was amazing. This is what happens. This is what happens when you follow this deep, it's like a deep inner calling in your intuition, in your soul. And it's so subtle. I, oh, it's so subtle that it's like... Um, you have to learn how to turn it up, sort of, or just trust, like, a, like um, I put on my Twitter, I keep seeing butterflies, like, everywhere, and two butterflies, so one of my last teaching videos here, I said, oh, I saw a butterfly when I was starting this, it was this big monarch butterfly, and then, um, at the almost the end of the teaching when we we're talking we we're talking about ascending and transformation and um, so I'm not just talking about butterflies oh there's here's this path okay so I'm not just it's not just random oh I saw a butterfly like I'm in nature of course I'm gonna see butterflies but they stood out and so I'm trying to teach you guys at the same time how to listen to your intuition because it's like Paul Coelho's book the alchemist he follows intuition, each step to all these different steps. Or I guess sort of like the Da Vinci Code. I'm not trying to say. He follows clues with his mind as well. But you have to use your intuition a lot. And um, so I, sometimes I say it's like you're reading a page and your mind is relaxed. And it's like words pop out of the page, like three or four words. And um, it's like they're highlighted. And so, I'm trying to see if there's any shade here. Um, I don't know if it was my idea to go up this trail, because I know I meant to go the other way. Let's see. I mean, it was part of my idea. You have lots of different desires. Like, you can have a desire to be hungry and a desire, I mean, desire to eat, a desire to take a nap, a desire to call a friend, a desire to do all sorts of different stuff. I think I'll just sit here. Ooh. Um, and so they call those your different eyes. And then who is the real eye? Who is your essence? Again, you can ground yourself. Look at these tall flowers, weeds, whatever. There's some bees. All right, so I couldn't believe it. Like, possibly I was dancing to the song at the same time my friend Jeffrey passed away.
we're all connected and it's just strange. So I was going back to the butterflies for a second. A butter, butter, butterfly is about transformation from one form into another form, from, you know, um, a caterpillar into this, this thing with wings that flies, that's free from all our old. Ah, I forgot to put my phone on airplane. So I got a call and it knocked me off. Anyway, um, oh, I hear a hawk. It's just like what we're talking about, about soaring, about, so what I saw in that last video at the end of it, um, the one, oh, there's two hawks over there. The one that was 11 minutes, 11 seconds, and someone came in at the end. I can't, I can't even remember which one I was talking about. Uh, I have these spikes behind me. These flowers. It's just, let's just keep going. Um, but in that video, two butterflies showed up at the end. There were two, and they were both in the shot. And then, like, the next day, I was at the beach, and there were two kites. And I like literally haven't seen kites lately because people haven't been out and they were two butterfly kites next to each other. Um, two different kids or people. I don't, I didn't even look down to see who was flying them. And then a couple days la later, which was like two days ago, I was, um, walking with my friend Tiffany and we were walking on this golf course by the beach and my eyes, I just, I don't know why my eyes were brought up to look in the horizon. And there are these two butterfly plaque things that are on the golf course, you know. And so, um, I still don't know. I just make a note of these things. And, you know, I trust also because I, I prayed a long, long time ago and I pray it often. It's just, God, show me yourself. Divine love, show me yourself in everything. Let me see you in everything, in every person and everything, every, every surrounding that I'm in, every circumstance. Look, there's a hawk. See, there were two hawks just now, too. I mean, it's not to like, here, I'll go under these sh this tree. It's, watch for snakes. It's not to like run your life by synchronicities. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's um, pay attention because there are other realms that are involved here. And when you develop a sensitive soul, you can get intuitions that enlighten you, that wake you up to higher realities. That's all. Like it's like higher. Oh, there's this thing again. Hmm. Two higher realities, and the higher realities give you a, a higher perspective. Okay, I have the feeling to keep going. Higher perspective than um, crunch, crunch. than the one you you currently have. Again, I've said it in different videos where it's like you're operating on the first floor, or the second floor, or whatever, and the the parts of us or the part of divine love or god or however you describe it is on like way beyond the 50th floor or whatever they they see the whole picture and can inform can inform you but it's just like if you move into your heart center and you have this heart of oh see i have nike which means victory in in greek and that's what i'm doing right now because i'm having victory in my life over sorrow, over sadness, over heartbreak, over old wounds that got triggered. I'm teaching you guys, as I was going through them, how to overcome these, how to not let this sense of lack dominate your life, and how to be in a place of abundance and love. And when you're in this place of love, you can use your mind, yes, but you have so much more access to, to your knowing, to your deeper knowing. Um, when you go into your heart space and when it's cleared out, because when it's, when you're all wounded, it's just like, you know, if my foot was hurting, one of my friend's foot was hurting and she couldn't, or her calf, she couldn't walk for the longest time. And it's like all your focus goes on that wound, you know? And so if 
you're always in this, oh, I'm wounded, I can't ever get out of this, I need my parent, and we don't mean to do it, you know, because in childhood we are wounded, some of us more than others, but most all of us are, there's someone running, and so um, we identify with that and we wait for our parents to come and heal us. All right, so um, uh, and when our parents don't come to heal us or they come to heal us sometimes or they injure us more and we think they're going to heal us, then we go find people that are similar to that and we hope that they will heal us. But really, you know, what I've been talking about and what you guys know is how to take your power back and how to heal yourself, how to bring healing to yourself. And why we don't, why we keep waiting for other people to do this. But one thing that's come up, this is why we go back to ego highs and surrender. Oh yeah, and I already talked some about the synchronicities. You know, I just let them sit. The synchronicities, they just add up and I file them and they're just sitting there and I go, okay, reveal them to me when you want. And I didn't know why I was dancing to... um, to it's going to be a lovely day like I had no idea I was just like oh gosh this is so weird but it felt so good at the time so like follow what feels good and what what is fun and what is loving and what is giving of this love and what is authentic and what is it's it was natural it was natural it's really natural if I let go of my inhibitions it was very natural so is my singing even if I'm in a snarky mood or whatever I'm in I just I'm presenting it to you where I am as I am so that I think so that you know there could be lots of different reasons I have no idea why I'm being called on this path all of the reasons I'm getting my hair cut finally after all this so it's all just wild right now Um, but is so that you can be your authentic self you can learn how to trust your own self this is part of finding yourself instead of giving your worth and your power away to other people they don't know your life they don't know your visions they don't know what you're called to do I hardly know what I'm called to do but I choose to keep following it as it presents itself to me on the pages of my life as it unfolds, you know, as this beautiful drawing unfolds. Oh, look at these trees. If you appreciate it as this beautiful drawing that's like this path, like what's going to come around this corner, you know, as this unfolding, look at this. It's so gorgeous. This is nature. This is in your being, is this beautiful soul, just like this beautiful nature. I don't know all these trees. I learned learned about this one Apache Indian, and he would walk, he'd always walk a different way, but he walked through these trails and he'd named the trees. Like he had all these names for the trees. He knew them so well. And it's like, look at all these trees. You know, there are trees in your soul that you could name and know and that have magic in them, that have so much creativity, so much love that could flow through the leaves of those trees and give back to the world and and enrich your own life. But we we were reduced to this, you know, oh, this is a good place to stop. Oh, I knew it. Weird. Okay. Because I was like, lead me to some kind of spring. I said that last night, but I forgot that I had said that till just now. Some kind of moving water. Um, so this richness is in you, but you don't, you don't realize it. Because when, when we're rejected as children, then we're just reduced to this child that's like, you're meant to be seen but not heard. Go away, you know? And so... Um, Sometimes we've learned to reduce ourselves to that and we don't realize if I just add love, you know, victory, love this person and then get to know her, get to know him, like, like name, like the Apache grandfather, they called him grandfather, would name all the trees and know them and talk to the nature spirits in them or, or whatever, whatever he knew how to do. 
I, I learned a lot from, from him. But it doesn't come for free, you guys. Like, none of this stuff comes for free. Like, I learned a lot from him because I was seeking. Oh, people are coming. And he learned a lot because he spent the time walking slowly in wide-angle vision, being present in nature, appreciating it with love, love in his heart. Love connects you to all things. Hold on one second. Okay, so um, love connects you. This is why it's so important. You know, it says to forgive, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those. It means to let go of, release. Um, when you don't forgive, then, then love is blocked. And when I don't forgive, let's say if I don't forgive my parents or, or whomever, I keep sending the bill back to them and I'm waiting for them to show up. And in my waiting, it paralyzes me. In my waiting, it keeps me stuck. It keeps me without what I feel like I'm lacking. And it's just an illusion that I'm lacking it. But I am lacking it. If I keep thinking, like, my dog is going to bring me the love that I'm missing. And my dog, like, runs away and goes and lives at my friend's house or something. Then I'm not getting what, what I think I need. And I keep insisting. My story tells me that it's my dog that has it. She doesn't have it. My dog doesn't have it. I always had this. I always, you always have access to the fullness of love. And so it's about um, learning how to, again, go back to this love space and love opens up for you. Go back to this forgiveness. Stop seeing yourself as a victim and wounded wherever you are sorrowful and in pain. Bring love to that area. Listen and ask divine love to help you heal it so you can move on. And notice all the ways you're waiting for like something or someone or some circumstance to, to bring you the peace that you're looking for, the love, the fullness in your heart that you're looking for. Like um, 10 days ago, I did not have an opening to buy a house. I was just going to look for something to rent and I have to get out as a transition right now. And um, just this, is, this is, goes back to the ego highs, okay? So I didn't realize I kept trying and trying to control the situation by, um, by, um, I didn't realize I was doing all those meditations and crying my eyes out. I was in a lot of pain, you guys know. And, but I was doing like six meditations a day. And it's like, every time I was feeling, you know, bad and lost and all this stuff, I wanted to align myself back to love. And, but I was taking too much what happened, what I realized, with the help of another person that works with me, I was talking about her last time, a spiritual director, um, is that she's like, when you're doing this, Cheryl, you're not trusting, trusting in this meditation that was brought to me, I don't know, five years ago, four years ago. It's the main one that I am committed to do every day because it's important to be committed to a practice. Like if I go to yoga because I'm committed to do yoga every day, you know, six days a week or whatever, I know it keeps strengthening my body and I know that that's what I'm doing. But when I go to yoga, like I'm in a crap mood and I hope this yoga makes me get in a better mood, you know, then I'm trying to use the yoga for my end. And I'm not saying you have to be such a purist, like, well, I'm not going to do yoga then because I'm trying to use it for a different end. But when you let go of the outcome and you're just present with the yoga and you just do the moves, then like, I, you know, you end up, I don't know if my arm's going to show today, but you end up with this strong body. Okay. And um, you end up with that. And it's... That wasn't what I was looking for the beginning when I was doing it. I was just committed to balancing myself and bringing strength to my body. And the blood flowing um, keeps these ideas going and keeps you spiritually aware and awake in a lot of ways. And so, but what I was doing is I didn't realize. It's like getting so mad at other people in my life who I'm like, why do they keep running to those shortcuts, shortcuts, shortcuts? You know, those are so destructive. You know, and you can, it's so easy to judge other people. I'm, I feel bad about it. I'm sorry. Um, but I can totally forgive myself because it helped me because I know the principle that whenever you're judging someone else, 
you know, they say there's one finger going out and there's four pointing back at you or three or whatever, you know, in your thumb. And so you look back at, wait, they're mirroring. I'm noticing it in them because it's happening in me. Just like I was saying, when you open your heart up and you let love in and you forgive and you're in this place of allowing your intuition, words highlight on the page because you're tuned in to your intuition. Your intuition will show you the butterflies that my eyes lifted up to to see the butterflies while a song was playing. The song that was playing at the same time was More Than a Feeling by Boston. I looked it up. More than a feeling. And I forgot the rest of how it, went, how it went, but I looked up the lyrics. It was really cool. I was like, yep, that's, that's about right. That's about where I was tuned in that day. And the butterflies are about this metamorphosis and you're changing. But back to where was I is you are, um, when you're back in your intuition. Oh no, I'll, I'll, it'll come back. When you, um, there's a little butterfly, but it's a white one. When, when, oh yes, when you, when you're judging other people, it's the same thing that you're doing. And I was like, how am I doing that? I'm not doing that. You know, you get all self-righteous. And I realized it's like, oh, I wasn't trusting. And this woman was helping me see, I wasn't trusting that my exercise that I'm committed to on my spiritual path of going into this meditation every day was enough. It was enough that the depth and the quiet and the grace and the insight that I get from doing that exercise is enough. It pours into all these different areas of my life during the whole rest of the day. It keeps my um, spiritual self awakened. It keeps me not in this victim place. It keeps me in this abundance place. But guess what? Like, you know, um, the laws of manifestation, I'm like asking you guys, I hope you do, but it's like some of my clients have never heard of it, so I teach them sometimes, you know, if it comes up, it's like, uh, you're like a mirror again. And so if you keep looking at the image in this mirror over here and you keep going, I want that image to change. It's like, I'm looking at myself in this video. It's like, when I change, that changes, you know, oh, I don't have my heart necklace on. I just took it off for this in case I run. But when I'm in my heart, then everything around me reflects back love and reflects back abundance and the flow of all the good comes through everyone and everything. And so what I was trying to do was control that and then and to, to try to just run back to that state, please God, just, I'm going to take myself back to that state. And this is how, you know, and some of those meditations that I recommend are totally really good. And they um, release a lot of our old baggage. They help us get in touch. Oh, that's what I was going to draw for you guys. I don't want to get out my notebook right now. Um, but um, it's the pie chart. It's, it's okay, imagine a, a pie, like an apple pie. And the person that's provoking you that you're getting so mad at, it does like one sixteenth of the pie, you know, one piece. But you have, let's just say it's one eighth. You have seven eighths of the pie or six eighths of the pie that's full of your own baggage full of your past pain. And, oh, I can draw it on the ground. Here, there we go. Here. Okay, so here's the pie. And here's the thing that the one person did. Hopefully you can see this. And then here's all your other baggage. Um, maybe we can do leaves, whatever. All of this is your old baggage. And this person just did this little part right here. And we throw all of our baggage onto this person. This is all of our pain from the past. And this person just did this. And um, hopefully that's, it's not that clear in here because it's not like white ground, but something. Um, What happens is, um, we think we're doing all this bad stuff. They're doing all this bad stuff to us and it's just provoking all our old pain. And so we get all mad and we judge them. And then if we look at, wait a second. Oh, that's what I was going to say. 
back to that. I'll just tell you guys, this is part of what we're doing here in these videos is as you clean up the pieces of the pie, as you do some of those meditations that I did recommend that are great meditations, you start clearing out those pieces and they're like, let's say they're filled with light and they're filled with love and abundance now can flow through those areas. Then when you interact with these people, you don't have as much of a tendency to go into your uh, unconscious, subconscious reactions and throw all your baggage at them because you've done the work. That's what I was saying. Like the grandfather of Apache Indian has done the work of being silent, being present, appreciating all these things in nature, learning how to cultivate that in his own soul. And when you appreciate them outside, again, you know, you appreciate this and you're in it. Here, I'll pick up this wrapper. Then you start to also just naturally appreciate it inside your own inner being. This, all the trees in your own self, all the leaves, all the insects, all the, there's so much beauty that can unfold in you that no one ever taught you. This creative magic is in there, you know, and it activates with love and you can create amazing things in your life that no one's ever heard of or dreamed of, dreamt of. It's your dream, your dream with divine love, with God, with creator, whatever your gifts that are inspired see by this wind that comes in and wakes it up but when we're stuck in all of our pain and stuff we're missing all of that we're missing all that we just see ourselves as this neglected child you know or this scorned lover or scorned whatever you know whatever whatever limiting it they're called limiting beliefs for a reason they're so limiting I just want us to let them go so um, that's a beautiful tree Look at how big this is. Oh, there's a bird. I think there's a bench in there. That's up a little. Anyway, so I think those are limbs. Hello, tree. No, that's a bird. Hello, bird. So what I'm saying is then when you, when you learn how and you take the time to clear this stuff out so you're not bound by this, you're not enslaved, you know, there's a picture of a woman and she's tied up again. I've talked about that on um, these archetype type old pictures and it's like she has a sword next to her. She can just cut the, cut the, um, the ropes off but she doesn't she's blindfolded some of the pictures so she doesn't know that she can cut them off but just cut them off these are the ways you can cut them off by entering back into love learning how to be appreciative learning how to silence them and not give all this weight to all of your old pain and all your rushing thoughts and all these different parts of you that say they're your eye and your ego self and all that stuff but um what i was going to say about what i was doing is Hi. When I kept going back, hi. when I kept going back to all these meditations and was trying to take the power myself, um, I was communicating to myself and to the universe that what I was doing wasn't enough. Hi. And hi. And so. Um, what I kept getting back, guess what, is not enough, not enough, not enough. I got lack from everywhere I looked. Nope, you're not enough for me to communicate to you. You're not enough for, for you to have resources to get a house. Um, you, you don't qualify for this loan or that loan or whatever it is. You um, don't have enough here, don't have enough there. And I didn't realize I was putting the message out to the universe because you get in this fear state, which has been going on and being provoked in our society right now by be afraid of this disease, be afraid of that, be afraid of all this stuff and all this divide each other, telling each other, you know, be paranoid of each other. Don't be hugging, don't be close. There's all this fear going on and it takes a lot of work to not, a lot of inner work to not get caught up in that and to um, learn how to, um, Oh my gosh, the people on the trail today. And how to learn how to um, 
not buy into that. But you, I, I can only not buy into it. I still got into it some. I can only not buy into it because I practiced and practiced not listening to all the voices around me that say, I'm Cheryl, I'm Cheryl, I'm Cheryl. No, my essence is Cheryl. I'm learning to listen how more and more to my intuitive soul self, my child self that wanted to be heard, that I keep going back to scoop up and love her and listen to her now and go, let's go where you want to go today, you know? And not just, oh, my professional side says this, blah, 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 you are a psychologist. You have to look like this, be in this box, forget the boxes, you know? You guys know I mean that. And so um, what I was communicating out to the world was I don't feel like this meditation is enough. I have to do six meditations. And I was getting a quick ego high. That's what I was going to say. Ego highs, you know, you could, um, oh, look, you know, I made X amount of dollars today and now I feel okay about myself. I had this whole checklist, you know, I used to talk to a lot of moms. I had moms come in for therapy too, you know, and it's like, I have all this list of all the things I need to get done, you know, buy diapers, change this, da, 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 all these things. Um, and it's like, if I did all those things, then I feel like, oh, ego high, I'm, I'm good today, I'm good in my box. Or if I do this, if I go exercise, check, ego high, you know, if this person likes me, check. Oh, if all these people like my posts, check. If people are watching the videos or whatever it is, and it's like, if you base your worth on those things, then you keep trying to get ego high to prop up your ego every day um, because that's because you're confused, you know, because you think that's your worth and that's who you are. That's not who you are. That's, that's like uh, Halloween. We put on a costume, you know, and I wear my Wonder Woman costume. I love that one. But, um, but you know, it's like, that's not me. That's, that's the costume. That's my essence is who I am. And I'm always worth, and you were worth because you were born here. You were worth before you were born here. You just are love and you are loved and you're valuable. And so when we keep going external and try to get these ego highs from chasing after, you know, you can do that from, from, uh, from addictions as well. You know, it's like, oh, I don't feel like it. Uh, let, let me just use this thing to make me feel better. And I was staying up pretty late at night too, because I always feel better when I stay up late at night. It's so quiet, but it was causing me to be really tired, obviously. And um, again, it could just be ego highs and not to judge everything or like live such a rigid life. It's not like take everything out, but learn, like identify when you're trying to run to external things to keep filling you up. Guess what? When those things don't fill you up, then you feel like, crap you feel really bad and you go really low and you spent let's say years or months or yeah years your whole life trying to prop up that ego and when that structure falls down it's like you know Christ telling us the story of the wise man built his house upon a rock because when the storms come and your house gets you know his house the person that built his house on a foundation on your essence self not on your ego self when the winds come and all the storms which are going on right now in our life and our world, um, your house isn't blown down. You're just, you're there, you're you. You got this, you got this covered, it's fine because you return more quickly to your real self. And you realize, oh, I was doing all these things because I didn't trust. And again, I was talking about that in the last video of not trusting. And that goes back to surrender too, because when you trusted in your parents and they didn't show up for you in the ways they ought to have in childhood. You learn not to trust. And so sometimes it's hard for us to trust that the universe and your intuition and all these good things will guide you. And, um, but the ego enslaves you. You can watch yourself, observe yourself, how the things you run to, are they filling you up? Do they make your heart expand? Do they make you really feel that deep connection and sense of home? We're on our way back home. Give a little bit, give a little bit of your love to me. I have that song recorded. I kept feeling better in the moment because I would do the meditations and try to align myself back with love. But, you know, when I let go and I trusted that Christ or you know, divine love, was going to bring healing to me. I, that's when I went down deep into my soul self and found her again on a deeper level. 
and I was like, all right, we'll just surrender and see what happens. And I hope to God it works, you know, and it did. It released me from a lot of the things. They looked like spiritual things and they can be good things, but anything misused, like I was saying, if I keep, if I do six hours of yoga all, all day, every day, because I keep hoping that it will get me in a better mood. It's like, well, guess what? Maybe, maybe your child self is wanting to express something deep in you, some joy or sadness or grief or loss or happiness or communication and you're running from that because you're just trying so hard to get back to that good feeling place with yoga or whatever you know and here it's like it's easy that's why with Elliot he was such a par paradox to me because I knew not to judge him he didn't judge me I didn't ever want to judge him but I was like I don't understand he's drinking so much but he's so present he's more present than you know the people, anyone that I had met at, at, up to that point in person, um, anyway. And so it's like, any of us can put people in boxes and go, oh, they're doing this. I would never do that. And it's like, turn around, look at yourself. And look at this, the pattern that you're doing is the same pattern they're doing. Just because it shows up in a different form doesn't mean you're not doing the same exact thing. Heal what's inside of you and you'll learn to love everybody wherever they are and wish them freedom from running to their ego, you know. But if they are, like it's not yours. You don't know. You don't know how someone's path is unfolding or what they came here to experience. Um, so just, I don't know, I'm trying to like let people just experience life however they want want it to unfold but but you see what I wanted to communicate today is that I wasn't in surrender and now that I'm moving back into surrender God help me stay here then all this trust comes and everything feels so much easier and like all the love is going to come and it is coming my way and all of a sudden after two months or more the door opened and they're like oh yeah you can get a loan and you can do that and like nothing changed in the finances of anything so these same people I just like moved into a parallel reality. Don't tell anyone, shh, not kidding. I don't know how it happened, but when I got into this place of, oh, abundance is gonna come, of course it's gonna come, you know, and I trust, and I'm gonna act and trust even when I don't trust, and watch what happens, and then I learn to trust more, then like, openings show up. And I think too, I insisted on things happening a certain way and when I let go, I'm like, I don't care how they show up. Like, just bring me the love. Like, you know, because I trust that God wants me to be loved because we're meant to be in resonance with love. You know, I've come to bring you the joy, the joy that is in me. I want it in you so it may be complete in you. This is what Christ said, you know, your joy may be full and um, the love may be full, full, full. Come, follow me. Join me on this path of aligning with love. Give us this day our daily bread. All of those things I've talked about so much before. All right, I'll wrap this up. Surrender. This morning I woke up, and I've only heard this song like once before in my life, but in, it was like, Jesus, take the wheel. And it, I was like, okay, I, I hear you. And then I had to go deposit something at the bank, go figure. And I decided to listen to the song, and I'm, it's super sweet. It is just about surrender again. And it was... It's just so tender. I get these tender messages. Who knows where they come from? They show up in my heart, in my soul, in my surroundings, through people that I meet, through like dancing to a Bill Withers song. It's going to be a lovely day because I listened with my heart to my friend Todd, who was posting about how he wishes so much lovely days will come in the future. And my heart listened and my heart responded. Then my heart got fed back a beautiful song that brought me all these memories back from the 90s the late 90s and then I was dancing and I found and I videoed it and, and then it's the same time there's a white butterfly same time as my friend Jeffrey was passing away you know and he had just paid respect to this guy and the song that had passed away and so it's like ah the breeze again when you go to these places and you surrender and you're in love then love just surrounds you so like, I invite you to be there, be here with me. I'm gonna do my best to keep teaching us how to let go of these old burdens so that we're not bound by them and we don't fall for their lies and all that stuff. 
All right, much love. Rock on, rise up, let's do this. Victory, Nike, much love.